everyone. Good morning. So sorry to come on time of the message. I usually come early, but my little daughter, she had fever all night. My wife was expecting the third baby. So we're glad to be here. Um, how many of you were here when the, I came the last time? Okay, so some of you remember. My name is Tiago. I'm now the missions pastor at the church at Bushland. And uh, I came to Amarillo by calling from God. And it uh, was a history of faith. It's a story of faith. And I want to talk a little bit more about this today. So if you want to go with me in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrew chapter 11. Let's go from the verse 1. Amen. It says like that. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what, we, what is seen was not made out of what is visible. And then um, you can read the rest later, but I know you, I'm sure you know this text. It's very known. It talks about the heroes of faith. And something that caught my attention in this text is that the Bible says that all of them, they do not see what they were about to do or the results of what they were doing at the time. And that's important for us because sometimes we put our expectations and we are here, oh God, I'm here, I'm serving you, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm trying to live for you. And we expect to see things happening in our lives like that. And that's not true, right? We have to, we have to produce, our faith have to produce hope in us. It's hope, it's confidence that God is real. And because He is real, our faith has to produce this confidence in Him. It's a trusting relationship, right? So, in my story, for some of you guys that were not here, I was in Brazil and I was an engineer there and I was a pastor. At the same time, like part time, I, I, I helped at the church uh, with the youth, and my wife was working with me on the ministry. And but I, I was happy. I was like serving God and confident in God, and like trusting Him for everything that I that I was doing. And uh, there was that time that my life started shifting, and. It, it was not like from a day to another. It was a process of six years praying for what is happening today. Six years. And I know it's just the beginning. Because when we moved from Brazil to Dallas to study, and then for by connection, a divine connection, I've met Tommy, Pastor Tom Spencer, he is the family's pastor at TCAB, and I met him in Brazil in 2019, but I never imagined that I could be here, like serving the Lord beside him today. And at that time, we were listening to the Lord speaking, I'm, I'm gonna bring you to this nation. And I said, okay, Lord, but how, how that's gonna work? And that understanding, that, that misunderstanding, when we want to understand something we are not seeing, we sometimes, we get frustrated. Mm -hmm. And 
Four times my wife would look at me and she would say, you're not, you're not doing nothing. You, you're like walking aside and we have to do something. Until the day that I had an encounter with God. And this pastor, he, he was an American pastor serving in Brazil in a very big conference. He came to pray for me and he said, you're trying to do the things with your own hands. Stop doing that. When you stop, God's gonna let the things flow naturally for you. And rivers of waters are going to flow through your life. And I told, and I told my wife, you see, it's naturally. I was not doing nothing. God's going to do it. His, his work. So, <laughs> but uh, in fact, what, I, what are some of the important lessons that I've learned in my faith, in my journey of faith, is that faith requires action. Faith is not something that I'm going to do. Oh, okay, God. You know, you told me, so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to wait for the things that you're going to do. No. Faith requires movement. When God says something, we, we got to pay attention on that. Because if he said, he's going to fulfill his word, but he's going to send us directions, signs, He's going to show us. If we go to, to the beginning of the, uh, to the end of the story of Exodus, we're going to see that Moses died. Moses dies and God calls Joshua, right? And he says three times for him, be strong and courageous. And why God is telling him that? You see in the Bible, there is like something in the Hebrew literati literacy. There is something in the Hebrew literacy. Every time you see a word or an expression that repeats three times, it's because God wants to call the attention of his people on that. It's because that is very important. So Jesus does that very many many times he speaks things and he says three times he speaks to peter and he says that he's gonna deny him three times because he's affirming that that is important and god is calling joshua and he says to him be strong and courageous and in the beginning of the book you're gonna see that god is also telling him that moses is dead Moses is dead, Joshua. Moses is dead, Joshua. And he's doing that because he wants Joshua to, to let the Holy Spirit come and lead him to the direction that he's given him. He would face, we know the story, they faced giants. They faced enemies that were stronger than them. Can you imagine you being a slave in Egypt for 400 years and now you're going to, I'm going to call you, you you're being like, you're, have, you're being working and carrying stones or maybe uh, working with cereals in Egypt and now I'm calling you, now you're going to face a giant. Get your sword, you know. It, it, it requires training to be a military, to be, to be like facing uh, wars and, and those kind of things. But God was with them. And he was saying to him, Moses is dead because he wanted him to understand that he would walk, not listen Moses anymore, but listen God. So faith requires movement, but also requires listen to God. Because God's going to give us the direction. He's going to show us the way that we must follow. 
And and uh, and we we sometimes we think, oh, but God is not talking to me anymore. Have you read your Bible today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any dreams? God speaks in many ways. He speaks through dreams, through prophecy, through the Word of God. It's here. It's revealed. Sometimes people say, oh, I got a prophecy. You know what? If that does not align with the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will not say something that is not aligned with that. That's the truth. So if you got into here, if someone gives you a prophecy sometime, that is going to confirm what God has already spoken to your heart. It's a confirmation. It's an affirmation for you to walk in God's presence and God's ways. And th something that faith can um, break is fear. Because fear is something that wants to stop us and wants to break us. But then when we have faith, we can overcome fear. We can come and, and we can, sometimes people, they, they look at me like they're in Bushland right now. Because we are planting an after school program here in Mesa Verge. And uh, in a very diversity, community, refugees, the school that we are working with, they have, they have kids from seven different nations. Like Congo, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Ireland, um, Somalia, and Mexico, countries from Central America. And, and people, people in Bushland, like they, they are like looking at me and, how are you doing that? Do you have volunteers? And I said, we started the application. We have 52 volunteers signed up right now. And the program didn't start yet. So everything goes by faith. One of the pastors looked at me, wow, man, we're probably going to need more volunteers. He said, God's going to provide. Amen. If he brought me here, it's because he has the right people. He has the right connection. He has the right connections that will come to serve the ministry. Because at first, at first, the ministry is not mine, it's his. It's his love for those kids that brought me here. It's his love for the people, for the families, for the communities in Amarillo that brought me here. When I, sometimes I met people here and they say, Oh, but do you miss Brazil, those beautiful beaches and everything? And I said, yeah, I miss it. But... I'm here in a mission. My life is not mine anymore. I decided to be a man of faith. I decided to believe for God the dreams that He had for me. So, anyways, I'm I'm I'm, I'm very. Uh, I brought some questions here for us to think about today. Things that talks about that talk about faith. Right? So, what is the difference between hope and faith? They are pretty similar, right? What is the difference between hope and faith? Can somebody help me with that? What is the difference between hope and faith? Faith ratio. The faith produces the hope, right? So hope comes with faith. If I don't have faith, I will not have hope. That's good. And another thing for me that is very, there is very important, because as an engineer, my mind works like with math, my mind, my, my, my mind works with logic, so I want to 
see things happening logically. But in my journey of faith, I've learned that science is not true. Science is something that is looking for the truth. And sometimes they can find it, like in physical laws and everything. But the truth is the Word of God. And this truth can go beyond, can go beyond science. Jesus proved that. He broke a lot of physics laws. Walking on the water. <laughs> right? He, he crossed the walls. Can you imagine that? The disciples, imagine that we are here right now and Jesus entered through the wall. Oh my goodness, I would be scared to death. <laughs> That's what, what the disciples thought. Like, everybody was in the house that, like, it was closed. And he came through the wall. That's why they, they were so scared. It's not because they were not trusting that was Jesus. They saw him. They recognized him. But they thought, wow, it's a ghost. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm scared. And he came to break those laws. He came to prove that he is the truth. He is the life. He is the way. He's supernatural. He can do things. And faith is a gift to overcome the impossible. How many of you had an impossible situation in your life? And you were like, oh no, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then God says, uh-uh, I just need that seed of faith. Mm -hmm. And everything's going to change. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Faith is a gift to overcome the impossible. When we see the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we see faith there. And sometimes it's normal. Some people will have more faith than, than others. We just, we just got a new car. And someone gave that car to us. But when I came here, in, when we came here in January, I told my wife, God is telling me that we're going to get a car. Someone's going to give us a car. And, and she goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then, <laughs> two weeks ago, this guy, is, he calls us and says, Hey, Tiago, what you're what you doing tomorrow? It will be a Saturday. And I told him, we have a meeting with a family. How about lunch? He said, okay. And, can you and your wife, your kids, come to, to our office for like about two hours? I said, yes. So we went to his office Saturday morning and we were talking. So he was showing me like his showroom, everything. He works with construction. And, and he was telling me his story of faith. Like the doctor said that he could not work or walk anymore. And he has a 22 years construction company right now. Doing renovations, doing a lot of things. And, and uh, he just stops and says, hey, we're glad you guys are here. And we know you don't have family here. We want you guys to count on us as family. Because that same week, my wife went to the emergency room at BSA. Her heart was like, 210, like on the, on the Apple Watch, like it's crazy. Not even athletes can get on that. I'm glad she's alive. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. And she had like hard breathing, so I took her to the hospital and it was a hard situation. And then they said to us, you can count on us as family. We're here for you if you need, for us to take care of the kids sometime. But uh, we want to, just bless your kids. We have some gifts for him, for them. Gave some toys to my sons and to my my kids. 
And then he said, we have something else for you. Come here. So he calls me to the garage. And there was that all black Tahoe um, for Explore. Man, it's beautiful. And I was like, oh my goodness, God, thank you. And my wife started bawling. <laughs> and I, I look at her and I said, I told you, God told me that we would get a car. And he just says, the guy said, you guys are having a big family now, you need a bigger car. So, again, it's interesting because a few weeks ago, someone looked at my car and it was full of things. I was moving things from Bushland to Mason Bridge. Anyways, this person looked at my car and says, hey, you need a bigger car. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's fine, God knows what I need. And like two weeks later, this car comes, and and uh, it's about this. It's about trusting. It's about overcoming the impossible. Faith help us to overcome fear, diseases, right? Rejection, death, war, persecution, spiritual warfare, depression brokenness and suffering so we all need faith but we need to put our faith in the right one and I'm glad you're here to hear this word today because many people in the world now dealing with nations I know that some of the tribal Africans they cut their body to look like an alligator because they think the alligator is their God. There are people in India, they are worshiping a rat right now. At the same time, we're here worshiping Jesus. They are worshiping a rat or a cow. And they think those animals are their gods. Right? I come from a city that the Catholicism is very, very strong. My parents are Catholic, my whole family, I'm the first Protestant Christian in the family. And in my city, they have a procession for Mary that moves more than two million people in one, in, in only one procession for you guys to understand how big it is. My city has 1.3 million people. Can you imagine in one procession, two million people being there? So it's more, the people in the city and everybody, like everybody now, but many, many people from Brazil and from other parts of the world, they go there to follow Mary, to follow a sacrifice, to do a sacrifice, they put a they put a rope. It's a big, it's a giant rope, and the people they believe that in the end of the procession, if they get a piece of that rope, they, their lives are going to change. So they they fight. They are in a procession. They 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 are playing Christians, but they fight because they want to cut the rope. And they want a piece of that rope to take home and believing that someone's going to be healed in their houses or they're going to get freedom. And we know that only Jesus can produce the right faith in us. Amen. Our faith must be in Him and nothing else. Our faith must be in our Savior not forgetting that he is Savior, but he is Lord. He takes care of us. Amen? Amen. So we need faith to live life. It's a daily thing. The faith of tomorrow will not fit today. Mm -mm. The faith of today must be fresh, must come from the Holy Spirit of God must come from him it should be it must be an anointing for our life daily 
And faith requires action. Don't forget that fear wants to stop you. And faith is going to move you in the right direction that God has for you. Amen? Amen. And God works with that. He will show you the next step. Don't worry. He holds you. He has you in His hands. And He knows what He's doing with your life. It's going to take you to the right direction. Just pay attention. Pay attention. Listen to His voice. Read His word. And He's going to talk to you. It's going to be sweet. Sometimes, <laughs> if you're in a tough time, he may, he may speak to you with voice of strong waters. I think I have one minute before I am here. So I have time to tell you this story. The first time that I heard God speaking with me was because I was dating my wife. To, she's my wife today. It's two <laughs> and forever. But she, she, at the time, we were dating, and I had four other girlfriends at the same time. Oh my goodness, this was, it was hard. I can tell you, three different cities, telephone separates. I could not walk with this phone if I was with her. And it's all right here, could not be here, so. I was, not a, I was not a Christian at the time. So, so he suffered. She suffered. <laughs> but the first time that I heard God's voice was because of her. It was 4.30 in the morning. It was raining. It was a powerful storm. Can you imagine like a powerful storm here in Emerald? Like those that you can listen to, like the roof. <laughs> And the thunders, and man, and I woke up and I could not even move. I could just move my eyes because I could see I was in my bedroom and I was, I could, I could not move my fingers. It was like an 18 wheel truck on me and I was stuck on the bed. And I was, what, what is happening? What's happening to me? I was trying to scream to someone, help me, and I could not move my mouth. In the middle of that storm, I heard God's voice saying, Do you know Nina? Oh. <laughs> and uh, I was like, inside of me, oh, oh, I know who's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, and I started crying and in my mind praying, Lord help me, I repent. And, and he said, take care of her, because she's my daughter, and I love her. Man, the other day I woke up, I don't want to talk to you anymore, buddy. <laughs> Nowadays I'm just having one phone, praise God. God's going to speak to you. That's my message for today. Faith requires action. Don't let fear stop you. Okay? And be faithful to the one person that God is going to put to your life. <laughs>